In this video, I'm going to show you how contract-first application development is done using Epicurio Registry, Apache, Camel, and Kafka. This simple money transfer demo receives requests to transfer money from one account to another, and then split the request into bookkeeping-like records. The receiving end is a simple RESTful API calls, and the bookkeeping transaction records is stored in MongoDB. The application is designed to be event-driven with two topics. Each expect different data shapes and different serial and visualization mechanism. The contract, which in this case, the schema, is stored in Epicurio registry. Then I will use the mighty powerful camel to implement the contract. For the overview and what each component is doing, please take a look at my previous concept video. Now the basics. We need to have a Kafka instance. Please download it if you don't already have it. Here I'm using Red versions of Kafka, which is called AMQ Streams. And go to my example repository, clone my example repository. Inside the repository, run the demo setup script. It will start up a Kafka cluster and clean it and also create all the topics needed to run in this demo. Other than actual two demo topics that we need, they are a couple for the storage for the Epicure registry. And start out the MongoDB using the container. After it's done, we can go ahead and start the Epicure registry. Simply install and start the container. Since we're using the Kafka cluster as our persistent store, We'll need to let it know the address of the Kafka cluster. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to upload the first schema, which is using Kafka's most commonly adopted schema type, Avro. Just select the file I have pre-created in the repository. So normally someone in the team will be responsible for creating the schema. But in this case, I have pre-created for you. And give it a name. So normally the name of your schema would be the topics, the name of your topics. But here in this case, I'm just being lazy, so I'm just giving it a random name. And then do the same thing to the other schema, which is using the Google's protobuf schema. Both then will be available in the registry for future reference. You can also set the validity and compatibility rules. Now we have the contract ready, let's start coding. First, we will have to create a simple application that has a RESTful endpoint and then sends the results into a Kafka topic called WebTrans, which takes in a transfer request. There are many ways to create Camel application from scratch, but I'm not going to go into details on how to do that in this particular video. Please go ahead to my blogs if you want to know more about it. And let's go ahead to the POM file where it's going to tell you all the dependencies that we need in order to run this contract first application development, right? So uh, we know, first of all, we need to have a RESTful endpoint. Therefore, we need all the libraries, the HTTP libraries. Here, we're using the Netty HTTP in the Camel applications, as well as the Camel REST. And then we're connecting to the Kafka topic. Therefore, we need the Kafka components from Camel. And last but not least, which is the important part, is the libraries from Bacurio. We'll be using the libraries and then configure that on top of Kafka components in order to use the serialized and deserializer that's provided in the Epicurio libraries, as well as some of the strategy to store the schemas as well. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the plugins. The plugins are especially important because at this point, we don't have the schemas yet. As a developer, I don't know which schemas I need. I don't know what the schemas would look like. So first thing first, we need to have a way to download the schema and this particular uh, Epicurio blockchain help me to talk to the Epicurio registries and download that particular uh, schemas. As you can see, I have to point to the right Epicurio URL as well as telling it where, which schema that I needed to download and where to store it. And once I have the schema, here comes the fun part, which is how a Java developer would know uh, the contract, 
Well, what's the easiest way for Java developers to develop? Well, we like to play with Pojo. So if we can convert the schema into Pojo, that would be the best. So these plugins help us to convert the schema from the registry into a Pojo so that we can start working with the Pojo. So we're giving, setting all the stuff into the Pojo and the Pojo will then generate the right format, uh, which the topics needed. And let's go ahead and do a Maven compile. Once the Maven compiled, I would end up with a downloaded schema from the registry as well as the generated Pojo where I'm going to start coding with. Let's go ahead and take a look at the camera routes. It's very self-explanatory, not much explanation that I need, but as you can see, we have a RESTful endpoint listening from port 8081, ready, ready to take in a JSON file underneath the path transfer. And after getting the JSON file, it's going to convert that particular file into a the POJO, uh, the protobuf POJO using the Marshall uh, data format components in Camel and then sends that particular data into Kafka topic called Web Trends. So all the configurations for Kafka are under application properties and I have uh, connect to the brokers as well as setting up the group IDs. And then you can see I have also set up the serializer class for serializing my data into Kafka topics and some of the other stuff like how I wanted to store my schema into the registry as well. And we're done writing the application. Let's go ahead and start it. Once it starts, let's put it aside and move on to the second application. The second application deals with two topics. The first one is obviously the one that we have just published to, and obviously it's using the protobuf schema. And the other one is dealing with the transaction records, and this one is using the Avro schema. So we'll be using the protobuf schema from registry, generating the POJO, playing with the POJO, split the records into two, and then write them into the topics using the data shape that was defined in the Avro schema. And let's take a look at the dependencies. And obviously we're using the Kafka components as well as the Epicurial library that we have mentioned, which we're gonna use this for serialize and deserializer when receiving the data from the Kafka topics. And for the plugins, similar from the previous application, first of all, we need a way to grab the schema from the Epicure registry, and we're using the same plugins to get both schemas. So here you can see that I defined two different schemas that I needed to download, and as well as now we need to generate the POJO from two different schemas. One is protobuf and one is Avro. So here I'm using two different plugins. This plugin is used for generating the POJO from the Avro schema and the other one obviously is generating the POJO from the protobuf schema. And let's go ahead and do a Maven compile, which then is going to download both schemas. As you can see, there's two schemas that are downloaded on, under my folders from the registry. As you can see, they're all the same, as well as the POJO has been generated using the plugins from the schema. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the camera routes. The camera route itself is another, again very simple. Uh, first of all, it gets the data or the events coming from the Kafka web trends. As you can see, it's been configured to use different serializer and deserializers. First, first of all, it's using a, a protobuf deserializers and then has been transformed into the POJO and then we get to work with the POJO. So basically, here I have a very simple math which maps the protobuf POJO into the Avro POJO. Very simple stuff and splitting it into half. One is, one is using the subtract and one is using the addition, uh, making it split it into two different records. I have an intention to have uh, two different routes, which I can then add a little bit of integration later on if I need it, just for flexibilities math. And if you take a look at the application properties, you will see that I'm using uh, a serializer for Avro, which is sending off serializing my data into Kafka using Avro Kafka serializer. And also when I was receiving data, I was using the protobuf Kafka deserializer to deserialize my data from the Kafka topics. 
And then that was it. Very simple. Uh, let's go ahead and start the application. Once the application has started, let's put it aside again and then go ahead to the last application. The third application reads from the transrect topic, which has its data shape defined using the Avro schema. And then it's going to write everything down into the MongoDB. The dependency of this application is very simple. Basically, you need MongoDB, of course, and then you're connecting to a Kafka component. So all these are defined in the dependencies, as well as the Apercurial libraries we have been using. And in this case, we need it for the deserializer for Avro. And then the plugins. The plugin is simple enough. We need to grab the Avro schema from the Epicurial registry. So therefore we need the plugins to download it from, as well as the way to generate POJOs uh, from the Avro schema. So these are the two plugins that we need to into our POM file. And then we can go ahead and start the uh, Maven compile. And after compile, we have now the Avro schema downloaded into our application, that's our contract, as well as the POJO that was generated so we can work with the contract using Java applications. And now let's take a look at the camera routes. And here, this one is simple enough where we have the Kafka components that's listening from the transrec, as well as a couple of configurations in the uh, application properties where it has defined where the brokers is and where the Apercurial registry is and also the deserializer and here we're using the Avro deserializer and we kind of just convert everything into a string and then put it into the MongoDB. Now we're done, let's go ahead and then start this application. Once this application has started, let's go ahead and test this scenario. I'm going to issue a transfer request into the RESTful endpoint as you can see, this event has triggered all three different applications because they're all dealing with different things. And if you take a look at the uh, result, if we go down to the MongoDB, you can see that the two record that has been split has been received and it's in the database now. And now you know how to do contract-first application development in a event-driven way. Thank you.